ridiculously small classroom? Then where are all the students? <clears throat> Professor? Oh! <clears throat> yes! Hello, everyone! Thank you for attending today's class. I am Professor Stitch, and I have been tasked with preparing an introduction to today's lesson. Pumpkins. Today we are talking about pumpkins. Pumpkins are delicious. They are very good for eating. They make excellent pies. They can be used as decor. And of course, they make adorable little lanterns. So, it's very good to have a summoning spell for pumpkins in your repertoire. I will demonstrate. <clears throat> <laughs> As I was saying, pumpkins, having a summoning spell for them is extremely useful. They are lovely little things after all. As you know, pumpkins come in different shapes and sizes and uh, occasionally uh, colors. And of course, you can vary the size and shape and color of your pumpkin depending on the materials you use in your spell. And of course, Jada will have more information on that during the tutorial. And one more thing. Today's lesson has a magical attribute to it. And if you watch the tutorial, you will see the magical part that is involved in creating this little pumpkin. Yes, there is a buried spell in this lesson, and I defy you all to find it. So without further ado, I will send you all to the craft table. Do hold on to your seats. Ahem. Ha! In order to make a stuffed pumpkin, and one that fits in both hands, you want approximately 100 grams of a medium size 4 acrylic yarn in orange, and a smaller amount in green, so maybe under 20 grams. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, some stuffing, and you're also going to require a 5.5 millimeter hook. It's also known as an I or a 9 in the US, and a 5 in the UK. If you want a slightly bigger stuffed pumpkin, then you can try using the big blanket yarn. This is Bernat blanket yarn. It's a size 6 bulky weight yarn. You'll need approximately 150 grams in orange and maybe around oh, 30 grams in the green. It's definitely a scrap project, so if you've got leftover blanket yarn, then you might want to give it a try. You're also going to want a larger hook if you're making a bigger pumpkin. This is a size 8 millimeter. It's also known as an L or an 11 in the US. It's a size zero in the UK and of course you're going to need extra stuffing if you're making a big pumpkin. But once you've decided on which size pumpkin you're going to make and you've got all that together, we can get started. No matter what size pumpkin you're making, start with your orange yarn and make a slip knot. I'm demonstrating the smaller pumpkin today, so I'm using the worsted weight with the five and a half millimeter hook, but if you're making this large, make sure you've got your size six bulky and your 11 or L or eight millimeter sized hook for that. Begin by chaining 21 chains. Once you have 21 chains, we're going to use the half double crochet stitch. We're gonna skip the first chain from the hook, find the next one and half double crochet into it. You're going to half double crochet into each chain all the way back to the beginning and you'll have 20 half double crochet. At the end of row one and every row as we make our pumpkin, you should have 20 half double crochet. At the end of each row, chain one, turn your work, and for the rest of our pumpkin, we are going to be working into the back loops only. So the back loop is always the loop furthest away from you. So it's these loops back here, never the ones up front or closest to you, back loops only. We're still half double crocheting. You're going to half double crochet into each loop, back loops only, all the way across. You'll still have 20 stitches at the end of row two, but we're using back loops only to create a nice ridge effect in our fabric. 
At the end of row two and every row, you will still have 20 half double crochet stitches. You're going to chain one at the end of every row, turn your work, and you're always going to be working into the back loops only. So that's rows one and two done. You're going to work another 22 rows. So we'll have 24 rows in total. So another 22 rows of exactly this. Half double crochet in each back loop of each stitch all the way across. You'll still have 20 stitches at the end of every row. Chain and one and turn at the end of every row and just half double crochet in the back loops only all the way back across. At the end of 24 rows, so your 24th row, I will catch up with you. Once you've worked 24 rows, all back loops only, this is how we get this nice ribbed effect. So 24 rows in total, every row will have 20 stitches in it. When you get to the end of tw row 24, you're going to chain one and pick up the other short end. You're going to place the two short ends together. So remember, you've got 20 stitches in each row, which means you have 20 foundation chains here that you're going to look at. You're going to pair up the two short ends and we're going to seam the entire pumpkin together with slip stitch. So again, there's our little chain one. You're going to pick up the back loop only of the first stitch in your last row and put it right through the first chain, foundation chain of the opposite side. Then you're going to slip stitch back through everything. Don't slip stitch too tightly. You don't want a nice tight seam. You want a nice, nice even slip stitch all the way down this edge. Pick up the next back loop and the next corresponding foundation chain and slip stitch. Back loop only, foundation chain on the other side, and slip stitch. Back loop only, foundation chain, slip stitch. You're going to work that all the way down. You'll have 20 slip stitches at the end of this little seam row. At the end of that seamed row, you should have 20 stitches. You're going to cut a long tail of yarn because this is what we're going to actually cinch up and secure the bottom of our pumpkin with. Fasten off. Make sure that's nice and tight. And you can just tuck your little short tail into the inside. What you want to do now is get your yarn needle Thread up that tail and you're going to weave, so you're going to sort of identify this is a row, this is a row, you can sort of see every, every so often, the rows are pretty obvious because every two rows there's a ridge, right? So that's every ridge marks two rows, so row, row with a ridge, row, row with a ridge. Row, row with a ridge. It sounds almost like a song. Row, row, row with a ridge. <laughs> All right, so what you're going to do is take your needle and you're going to just weave it in and then out across stitches, the edges, the sort of the loop edges of the stitches at the end of each of those rows. So in and then out. And every in and out is going to cover two rows of pumpkin. In and out. And just try to grab the top edge loops. You're going to in, out, in, out, weave your tail all the way around and I'll catch back up with you. Once you've woven your tail in and out, in and out, all the way around the top or the bottom, I should say, edge of our pumpkin. And it doesn't matter if you skipped a stitch or made two close together, you're just basically making sure that you got the majority, an even majority of the edge of that piece of fabric. Make sure that your tail comes through to the front, it doesn't matter where you bring it out, any, any stitch is fine, and just very carefully cinch it shut. If you're dealing with a yarn that's a little on the gentle side, or it feels like it's a little bit weak, be careful, don't pull too tightly because you don't want to break your yarn. That would be really annoying. <laughs> 
cinch it as tight as you can and then you're going to hold it so cinch and hold just so it doesn't want to unravel on you hold it right up against sort of where the tail comes out and we're just going to work a few stay stitches so we're going to grab this doesn't have to be perfect either you're going to grab yarn ends from either side and just run a few tight stitches across there to get your yarn to stay Once you've worked a few of those stay stitches and you're working back and forth sort of like in diagonals all the way across your pumpkin bottom, you're just basically closing up that little hole so that no stuffing will leak out. So you can work as many of these stitches as you want. I tend to do around oh, five or six. There we go. Keep kind of sticking your hand in there and pressing up against the bottom to make sure there's no space or hole showing. And then once you're satisfied that your little hole is closed, you can bring your yarn back through to the inside. And you can make a couple of knots here, just so it doesn't unravel. go and then you can trim it if you like or just leave it because it's going to be stuffing and that is the bottom of our pumpkin all done it should look something like a little hat and uh, FYI this actually fits a preemie <laughs> so if you're looking for a super quick little miniature hat project that fits a preemie but we're on to a pumpkin so we're going to grab our green yarn next and work on the stem. Grab your green yarn, make a slip knot, and you can grab your little pumpkin and find the seam. That'll be this thing. It's very your seam is going to really just work itself in with the rest of the ridges, which is why I like this pattern because the seam just kind of adds another ridge to your little pumpkin. But you can start here if you want. I'm just going to reiterate that every single row so every second row there's a ridge so row row with a ridge 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 you want to sort of see that all the way around and then identify the top of each row you're going to connect your yarn here with a single crochet and don't worry about your little short tail you can just tuck it in or work over top of it whatever you want so we're going to join with a single crochet and then we're going to actually single crochet two together as we work all the way around the edge of our pumpkin. So that's a single crochet. That's going to count for that first row. Here is an edge piece of row two of the pumpkin. So I'm just going to grab anything, grab a loop, grab a whole piece of a stitch, doesn't matter. Pull up a loop. Here's the next row on the other side of that ridge. I'm going to grab a piece of a stitch, edge loop, pull up another loop. We're doing a single crochet two together, so you should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull back through everything. So that was that. Now we're going to work on these two rows. So I'm going to pick up a loop on the edge of that row. There's the second row. This doesn't have to be super fine science, guys. If you get a different piece every single time, that's okay. Single crochet two together. Next two rows. Take that. And I'll take this. <laughs> Single crochet two together. What you're doing is you're getting the whole top of the pumpkin to cinch inwards by single crocheting two stitches together across the edge of two rows. So you're going to work that all the way around. You're single crocheting two together across the edges of two rows at a time. And we'll have, you'll have um, about 11 
double crochet two together. You'd have 12, but we joined with a single crochet. So the actual numbers here don't matter too much. I'll show you what it looks like when you get to the end. Okay, I really do have 12 <laughs> single crochet two stitches together all the way around. And then there's that first single crochet that we joined with. Like I said, if you end up with 13 single crochet two together or 10 or 11, doesn't matter what you want is to have closed in the top of your pumpkin. So that's what we're going for here, guys. It should look like this, something like this. Your whole pumpkin is starting to pull inwards. You're also going to take a moment, pull up on your yarn and grab your stuffing. You're going to stuff your little pumpkin. So remember to stuff in small amounts. Grab small amounts at a time and stuff little bits in because you want to make sure that you get it all the way down to the corners and you pad out the bottom of your pumpkin. So little bits of stuffing and just stuff it in there little bits at a time. All right, we're going for a portly <laughs> plump little pumpkin. So what you want to do as you're putting in your stuffing is making sure that you're, you keep sort of jamming it down towards the bottom and spreading it out with your thumb towards the edges. And that's what's going to get us this nice chubby little pumpkin that looks sort of more round than tall. And if you keep sort of get in a bunch of stuffing and if you're sort of just re-squishing it around with your thumb, if you feel like you've got more room to add more stuffing, then you want to go ahead and continue adding stuffing until you feel that your pumpkin is firm, not too firm that you can see the stuffing through the stitches, you don't want that, but that it's not too squishy. I obviously still need some more stuffing in my pumpkin. If you're making the larger version of this pumpkin, the same stuffing technique applies, but you will find you need more stuffing. <laughs> Once you feel like you've got enough in there, and if you give it a little squish, it kind of bounces back up, you might even have a little bit perp sort of popping out the top. That's perfectly fine. We're going to continue now with the stem. So you can put your hook back in your big loop. There we go. And it's going to be a little bit more of, um, you're going to sort of want to hold and pinch your top as you work. And you're going to want to try and, and not get your stuffing involved. But if you work slowly and patiently, it'll be just fine. We're going to change up the decrease pattern a little bit here. We're not joining our work. We're just going to work directly into that first single crochet that we joined our yarn with, but we are going to pull tightly so that we can kind of close up any little gaps. We're going to single crochet two together across the next two stitches. Nice and tight. And then single crochet once into the next stitch. And there's my little tail sticking out. I'm going to take care of that later. Single crochet the next two stitches together. And then single crochet once into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that little single crochet two together single crochet, single crochet, two together, single crochet, all the way around, and I'll catch back up with you at the beginning. You'll now be down to eight, nine, or ten stitches all the way around. It just depends on how you wound up doing your first row of the stem. Doesn't matter, once again, in specific stitches aren't really that important. I have nine here, but eight, nine, or 10 is perfectly acceptable. You should just sort of tuck in that little bit of stuffing that you might have peeking out. And now we're going to work three or four rows, depends on how long you want your stem, of just single crochet. So now there's no more decreasing. You're just going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around for three or four rows. I'm going to let you guys decide how tall you want the stem of your pumpkin to be. Just take your time. It's a little funny when you're trying to single crochet in a tight space, <laughs> especially around something that's stuffed. Three or four rows, just single crocheting in each stitch all the way around. No joining of rows, just around and around. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Got 
that is what four rows of just straight single crochet looks like running up the top of my pumpkin. So three rows would be just a little bit shorter, but that's four rows. You also might want to take a moment to add a little bit more stuffing to make sure that your pumpkin is topped up and you don't have a terribly squishy <laughs> stem. And once you've added that, we're just going to slip stitch the top of the stem closed. So we're not slip stitching to finish off the last row. We're just going to work right into this little cinch up. You're going to put your hook through the next stitch, almost as though you were going to single crochet or slip stitch, but you're going to bring it back out through the next stitch. And you're going to slip stitch through those two stitches that way. Same thing, into the next stitch, as though you were going to crochet, but back out through the stitch beyond that. It's, you see it sort of popping the, the stem or the post of that stitch up on your hook. You're just slip stitching through there. And what's happening is that you are closing, you're cinching up the top of your little pumpkin stem. Next one. And you're just going to repeat this all the way around, you'll have about four, it's going to get pretty tight, you'll have about four slip stitches or five or six depending on how many stitches you had away way around. You're basically slip stitching two stitches together so you'll half the number of stitches you had in your last row and ideally you'll have completely cinched shut the top. Once you get back around to the beginning you can just slip stitch once in anywhere you want the top of your pumpkin stem to look a little gnarly, maybe a little kind of crooked. Cut yourself a nice long tail. Fasten off. Pull it nice and tight. Then you're going to take your yarn needle and you're going to bring your yarn through, so through the top up pretty much through the hole of your stem. Try not to grab any stuffing. Pull it out somewhere near the bottom. And what you're going to do is run it through some of the stitches down here where we connected our green so that we can gently cinch up the little spaces that are caused in between the slip stitches, or I should say that the single crochet two together and the regular single crochet. So this is just going to help close in that edge you can grab the tops of the stitches just like you were regularly weaving in your yarn. There we go. Don't pull too tightly, but what you do what you can see is that it will gradually start to close up those little spaces. So you can just sort of work this all the way around, grab some stitches, doesn't matter where. It's all green, so it's not going to show. and then just, just help cinch the whole thing up a little bit more. Once you're done cinching around the outside, you can just double back on some of those stitches just to make sure that your little tail isn't going to unweave itself. pull too tightly. And then you can just take your needle and run it through the whole pumpkin and pull that tail into the pumpkin where it pretty much just becomes a little bit of extra stuffing. If you've got any other little short tails hanging out like I do here, just weave them in back and forth across some stitches. And then if there's anything left, you can either trim it or just pull it inside the pumpkin. Lovely little things, aren't they? Yes, you can change the color, you can change the size, you can even vary the things that appear within them. Your stuffing doesn't necessarily have to be uh, polyester fiber fill, I believe she calls it. You can use chopped up other things like t-shirts or perhaps old hats that are no longer in use. Whatever you decide to do, I hope you had fun and learned something along with us today and thank you very much for attending class. We will see you all soon on the Jada and Stitches show. Oh, I just love saying that. Um, until then, stay safe.
Stay crafty and have an excellent week. We'll see you next week, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. So long. Thank you for coming. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. I hope you were paying attention. You put your feet down. No.